Hey guys, welcome back to Blind Strike Exotics, and today I want to look at my favorite holdbacks or hatchlings that I produced from 2021. Um, as of right now, not all of these snakes I plan on holding back, but the longer that they stay here, it kind of seems more likely that I'm going to be holding them back. Um, so they're on a, a bunch of different clutches that I produced this season, and they're really just my favorite snakes because of their uniqueness and maybe because of their um how hard they are some of them to produce so let's dive in and, and no particular order there's i think five snakes and, and two of them gonna bunch together so it's kind of a top five but not really so but we'll start with with the um the bottom of the list here all right we're gonna start here with a couple snakes from my big puma project Big Puma was an OD Leopard Enchi Pinstripe male that I bred to a bunch of Super Enchi females, um, some of which ended up having pastel in them. And I got some awesome results. And I actually wish there was two, there were two snakes that I sold that I wish I would have kept from them because they're just really pretty, super yellow. And I had two of them that uh, unfortunately I let go. This is one of the first ones that he produced from last year. Uh, as you can see, there's a big size difference here because this is one of the last ones I produced. She was not eating um, at the get-go of me, you know, trying to... I actually had to force feed her quite a few times. Um, she was born, I think, in May. And what I think she is is a, a super OD, super enchi pastel leopard. Um, kind of harder to ID, but I think that's what she ends up, you know, coming out as. She was force fed actually a couple times, and for some reason in the last two months she has just decided that she's biting at everything that goes into her tub. Um, and she's one of those ones where I'm obviously keeping her around a little longer to make sure that she's eating consistently on her own. And I haven't decided if I'm going to keep her or not. I don't know if I will. Um, she's really cool looking. She has the, I don't know if you guys remember, I posted the onk. Uh, snake earlier in the year that was sold and this is actually her sister same exact snake just decided not to eat um, but if she I don't know I'm just not gonna pull up here because she's not gonna bend her head down um, but she has an onk on the top of her head there which is how she got the nickname um, now this one here is actually the same snake as Big Puma the OD leopard and she pinstripe but it's Het Ghost, um, the, the pairing, the uh, Big Puma was actually bred to a Super Enchi Ghost female. So this snake is 100% Het Ghost, and she's crushing food. She was actually, I think, born in September. And this snake was from May, this snake was September. You can see the differences when you have a picky eater and one that's just eating everything. Um, this is going to be a hold back. I want to, the Super Enchi Ghost female I have is really cool looking. The ghost really does a lot to those combos and trying to hit all of those genes in a ghost uh, I think would really make the make the whole combo extremely unique. So she is definitely going to be a hold back. She's eating really well too. And you know, sometimes you can see kind of the effects that, you know, having a het in a snake does. And het, if you guys have, aren't aware is Genes that are recessive, like Pied, or Clown, or Ghost, or Desert Ghost, you need to have two copies of that gene for it to be visual. So, this snake doesn't look like a ghost, it doesn't look washed out, because it only has one copy of the gene. But, having one copy of this gene, it does definitely affect the color of the snake a little bit. I would say this snake's maybe a little more orange than her dad was. Um, which I think is probably the effects of the Het Ghost in there. I'm not 100% positive, but I would, I would assume that's what it is. Um, either way, she's an awesome snake and a great eater. You can see her head stamp there maybe a little bit. So these are the, the first two snakes on the list, two of the, two of the cooler ones that I produced from last year. So let's move up to, I guess, what I would consider number three. So number three is going to be this bamboo pinstripe ultramel female. Up to the point where I produ actually produced two of these this season, one of them was already sold. Um, as far as I know, I was only the second person to ever produce this combo. 
Um, Embers, ball pythons, I think they beat me to the punch by like a month, they actually produced one of these. Um, luckily, not luckily, but I guess fortunately for me I was able to get them up for sale before, before they were able to and I was able to sell the first one immediately. This one hasn't sold yet and the longer it stays here, the longer I think that it's probably just going to stay in my rack because of what it does. Um, for the for the genes that I have work, working. I really like the Ultramels. I think there's a lot more to do with them, especially working it into Pied. Ultramel Pieds are beautiful animals. Um, I actually have one up for sale right now if you're looking. And I just purchased a Orange Dream Leopard Firefly Ultramel Het Pied male from Ozzy a couple months back that I'm going to be working into my Ultramel and into my Ultramel Pied projects. You know, he's probably going to end up getting bred to a bunch of Pied females this year to produce some cool Pieds that will be head Ultramel. But now with that being said, he isn't Pinstripe or Bamboo. Um, so if I'm able to kind of take that snake and breed it back to this and have an animal that has three, four, five, six different genes that are just all completely unique and interact with each other in a bunch of different ways. I think I'm going to be hitting some really, really awesome stuff in a couple years with this. So I think the longer this one's here, because it's unique, because there's only, as far as I know, three or four of them out there. Um, I have one. I sold one. I think Ember's Ball Pythons has one or two, and I'm not sure if they sold them yet. I might hold on to this one just because of how unique it is. And it's kind of the best of both worlds with this snake. Um, if you guys have seen Pinstripe Ultramels, they're really cool looking, but they're on the darker side of the uh, Ultramel complex. They're, they're a darker uh, brown lines on their backs, and it's a darker color overall. If you've seen Bamboo Ultramels, they are some of the most beautiful single gene ultramels you can find bright yellows bright whites and this actually mixes both so let me actually get her up here if i can get her to get the camera to focus here slowly slowly maybe look at the pattern on that and look how bright it is um the bamboo and the pinstripe work very well together without the ultramel i think it does some awesome things for this snake with the Ultramel and it gives you the cool pattern of the pinstripe but it also make the bamboo makes it a lot brighter than if it was just a plain pinstripe Ultramel so this snake I think the longer it stays here the better odds of it not leaving my collection uh, I, I, she's really cool uh, she's a really awesome snake she's eating very well too so I think she may not be leaving the racks either. Let's move on to number two. My second favorite snake from this year, which is kind of hard to believe, is my urban camo female here. This was kind of like my holy grail snake that I wanted to produce this season. Uh, I actually got two of them out of the clutch. I had uh, a female that laid 13 eggs this year, which is my biggest clutch ever, and I got two urban camo females out of it. Now this one is the higher white pattern snake, which gives kind of a lot more contrast, if you can see that on her. Again, she's currently up for sale, but the longer I keep her here, the more I want to keep her. Not because, I mean, she she's very useful for breeding, um, but because this is one of those snakes that I probably would never purchase because it's not important enough for a breeding project, because it's not like a double recessive. Um, but if I produced it, I'd probably keep it because of how unique it is. It, it, it is a snake that really keeps the color and pattern and contrast as it gets older. This female is actually also super pastel, which I think, in my opinion, kind of creates even more contrast in the pattern. Well, let me get back a little bit here. As you can see, there's a lot of gray, there's a lot of black, there's a lot of white, there's a lot of muddling in the pattern. Just one of the coolest snakes I've ever seen. Um, and kind of 
insane crazy that I that I actually have it in my collection. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with her. Uh, she's eating very well. She's still eating live, which I'm trying to get her over onto Frozen Thought as soon as I can. And she is still currently up for sale on Morph Market, uh, but I don't know how long that's going to be for her. I just... She's awesome. She, I mean, she's really cool. I love her. I'm, I'm so glad that I was able to produce this and see it and hold it in my hands for myself. Um, if if my goal in, in this industry wasn't to produce something that's just kind of ahead of the game and crazy insane genetic wise, this would be the snake that you'd be looking for. I, I don't know if any ball python is going to be this unique without having two or three recessive genes in it and maintain the the cool look to it with you know the modeled urban camo look. So she's really cool. Um, She's growing sl slower because she's still on live mice and she's not taking frozen rats yet. Maybe maybe today's the day for that. Um, but she's awesome, beautiful snake. I again, this might be the third snake in this list that I'm that I'm planning on keeping back um, that I didn't initially plan on. So if you're interested in this snake and you want to buy it, you better buy it before I change my mind. But she's you know, she's ready to go. She's um, been crushing food for three four months straight here and and uh, you know. The longer she stays here, the longer, the better chances are of me keeping her. So, let's move on to number one, and the snake that I am 100% not going to be selling. Number one here is somebody who just got named actually yesterday. Her name is now Daisy. Maddie named her Daisy for us, and it's crazy to think that this is a snake that I almost lost. Um, and if you guys are following along. Uh, kind of in the middle of last year. This is, I think, my fourth or fifth clutch from the season. Somehow, I was showing people snakes in the snake room, and this clutch just hatched, and somehow forgot to put the tub back, and I lost all four snakes in the in the tub that were in this clutch. Luckily, I set up kind of like heat traps around the basement, and um, they all came and found them within a couple days. And she was actually one of the snakes that I lost. Thankfully for me, I found her, and she has just been crushing food ever since. Uh, now, the reason I'm keeping her is, well, because I've never seen a snake like this before. Ozzy produced, I think, something similar to it, but not exactly like this. And she's genetically a just an absolute powerhouse. I think she is a super orange dream, super enchy, leopard pinstripe. As you can see, I mean, she's six months old, at least. Um, she's growing nice. She's not, she's, I think, about 250, 300 grams at this point. But as you can see, she's retaining this, like, really yellow color. And I don't know if you guys have seen Super OD a lot in some of these combos. It actually starts turning these, instead of being black, these lines start turning a little more orange. Or, I mean, brown. But she's extremely yellow. And if she'll kind of slow down for me here. I can show you her head stamp. She has a really neat head stamp. And she doesn't like to sit still. Come here, baby. There we go. How cool that head stamp is on her. She's got beautiful eyes, too. So this girl, she is actually part of the, the big Puma clutches that I had. She looks nothing like any of the snakes that I imagined I was going to get out of any of those clutches. Now, I actually had somebody purchase Big Puma and a couple of the females that I was breeding at that time. So that project itself is kind of kind of defunct at this point. But what I'm going to do with her is raise her up. And because of her having Super OD, Super Enchi, Leopard, and Pinstripe, um, she's going to work well with either breeding her to clowns or to pides. And that's what I plan on doing. Um, you know, I have that Super OD Pied Combo Mail that I bought from Ozzy last year that, you know, they can't produce any recesses, but they can produce hets. And if I get some Super Orange Dream hets with a bunch of other crazy genes out of it, you know, from, from breeding those guys, I'm going to have some powerful offspring that I can start breeding back in a few years. So 
She's going to be a huge part of my breeding plans for my pied projects, most likely. But who knows what else she's going to be used for in the future. But, um, you know, going through my first big year where I produced some really unique stuff, um, having animals like this where I can grow up and keep and not only breed a couple years, but just kind of say, look, look, I produced this. I produced the bamboo pinstripe. Uh, Ultramel. I produce an urban camo. Um, it's kind of cool. Uh, kind of builds a legacy for you. You know, this girl, if she comes from one of my first clutches of this last season, and I have her for 20 years and get to show her to people, and she ends up being kind of a grandma here at Blind Strike, um, that's really exciting. And I actually, I took her out the other day, and uh, Maddie and I were playing with her, and she named her Daisy. I was kind of thinking to myself, like this, this snake right here is why. I love doing this. Um, it's just, it, when this came out of the egg, I had no idea that this was even possible from, from the genes I was breeding at that time. So when you get surprises like that, like surprises like this out of a clutch, it's what makes this exciting. It makes it something that you want to do full time. Um, so those are my top four or five snakes from last season that I produced. Um, I think I'm going to do maybe a, a top five video of snakes that I purchased or picked up from last season. Um, but these are the ones that are kind of, they're my babies and I hold them near and dear to my heart. Uh, especially Daisy here. So thank you guys for stopping by and checking out the video. Please remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.